Today I will talk about improving high throughput phenotyping using 2D images and 3D models. First, I will show how to create a 3D plant using only 2D images. Then I will explain how to extract more information out of a single 2D image using state-of-the-art computer vision algorithms. So, how can we create a 3D model? In our case, we want to go from the rotating plant on the left side to a 3D model on the right side. To get the desired 3D model, we first need to create a blank volume. Then we need to find our object via foreground background separation our images, cut out everything else that doesn't belong to the volume in the image, then repeat the step for the remaining angles, and in the end we will get our desired volume. To create such a 3D model, we need information about the lens, the distance between the object and the camera, as well as the angle of the object inside each view. It turns out that we need at least 8 to 10 images to create a decent 3D model, depending on the complexity of the image. Well, this is also the major downside of this method, as it will slow down the image acquiring process. On the upside, we'll have an easy way to separate organs from the plant, and we can easily extract branching information out of the plant and therefore create a branching model to further phenotype the branching behavior of each plant. In the next section I will show you how to improve phenotyping using only 2D images without having the necessary to create a 3D model. First I will start with a skeleton. A skeleton point is defined as a point that has at least two border points within the same distance. In this way, the complexity of the object is fairly reduced, but in the same way, the shape of the object is preserved. To create a skeleton of an object, we first need to find the object of interest using a foreground-background separation, then create the skeleton. The skeleton can then be used to identify the stem and the leaves of the object. Applying this technique over time allows us to track a leaf growing over time and get a detailed information about the growing behavior of each leaf individually. Of course, we can count the number of leaves, which determine the leaf length and the angle of the leaf to the stem itself. Also, we can determine the curvature of the leaf and track the leaf over time. To perform the same analysis on, on a flat plant, for example, an Arvidopsis plant, the skeleton algorithm is not suitable. Therefore, we need more sophisticated algorithms. In our case, we use a combination of machine learning and graph-based image segmentation to segment each leaf individually. To do so, we need first to identify our object using a foreground-background separation. Then a machine learning algorithm will calculate the probabilities for each pixels, um, indicating that a pixel belongs to, to your leaf edge, and then you use this information to create a graph-based image segmentation seeds and to identify each leaf individually. On the left side you'll see the probability mask where red color indicates a high probability that the pixel belongs to a leaf edge, and um, this mask was created by a random forest classifier trained with 5,000 features and on manually labeled images. We also tried Adabus, which were turned out to work great on corn plants, but not so good on Arabidopsis plants. Adabus is a combination of um, so-called weak learners. A weak learner in our case is the decision tree. Random forest is um, also a combination of weak learners, but on this time the majority word of the weak learners decide whether the pixel belongs to the foreground or the background. To create the probability mask we use so-called half features. A half feature is defined as some of pixel values in the gray area minus some of pixel values in the white area. It was firstly introduced by Viola and Jones. We used about 19 different uh, half features and also tilted by 45 degrees. 
and in various sizes and on various color channels. The probability mask is then used to calculate seeds for graph-based image segmentation. In our case, it's Random Walker by Leo Grady, where a graph is treated, is constructed in such a way that um, each pixel is a vertex and each edge contains information about the color information. Then this is used to identify the leaves individually and segment each leaf individually. Having the each leaf individually, we are able to calculate phenotypes for each leaf and therefore get a better idea of what the plant looks like and what the leaf's distribution are. This information will help us to get a better understanding of um, the plant itself. So in conclusion, um, Having one top image and two side images, we can calculate the biomass with a correlation well above 80% and the height and the extension of the, car, the plant with a correlation well above 95%. We can also use more sophisticated algorithms to identify the leaves and um, calculate different features of, of single or plant organs. Having eight or more side views of the same plant, we are able to calculate a 3D model, which will improve the calculation of the biomass, and um, all this without having the expensive 3D laser scanners. The downside, the image acquisition will slow down the process. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.